Jesus is telling them that the problem is not out there. Freedom is not fighting off the Roman oppressors or setting up yet another earthly kingdom. Jesus is telling them again that true freedom is freedom from sin. Hey guys, welcome to the video this week. I'm out here close to Nobby's Beach on the coast. Uh, came up on the bike and just uh, thought I'd come and do a video. It's a pretty nice day. But anyways, guys, last week we read in Mark chapter 8 where Peter rebuked Jesus and then Jesus rebuked Mark, accusing him of speaking Satan's bidding by trying to tell Jesus, right? By trying to tell him that he wasn't going to be rejected and killed by the Jewish leaders. And Peter had a wrong understanding of what the Messiah Jesus would do to free his people. And Jesus strongly corrects him and says, no, Peter, you don't understand. You are thinking like man. You aren't thinking like God. Anyways, guys, today we are going to continue in Mark chapter 8, and we're actually going to finish the chapter today. And we're going to read in the last passage here where Jesus now speaks to all the disciples after this. He turns to the disciples and the crowd that had gathered as Peter was being, as Peter had just rebuked Jesus and Je for saying that he would be rejected and killed. Jesus was setting them straight now as to what his mission as Messiah was really going to be. And Jesus also tells them that they will have to, a cross to bear. And if they wish to follow him, this is what the real deal is all about. <laughs> Anyways, guys, before we read today's passage, I'd like you to consider these two questions, okay? Number one, what does Jesus mean when he says that you must lose your life in order to save it? What does Jesus mean by that when he says you have to lose your life in order to save it? And number two, what areas of your life are you trying to save? Now, I want you to think about those two questions as we take a walk along the coast here and read today's Bible passage. All right, guys, we're going to start at verse 34 and we're going to go through to verse 38 here today. And it starts out by saying, And Jesus summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now, this is pretty interesting, right? Because let's pause for a moment and consider what just happened. Remember, Jesus had strongly rebuked the idea that Peter put forward, that Jesus isn't or shouldn't sacrifice his life and die. And Jesus correcting this notion that he is to fight against the rulers of Rome alongside his eager disciples. And remember, he tells Peter this thinking is not God's thinking, it is man's. Now, Jesus turns to the crowd and everyone who's watching and listening and to all this unfold and telling them, if you want to follow him, it means denying yourself. You need to stop worshiping yourself and your idols and start worshiping and following the true God. Jesus tells them to pick up their cross and follow him, follow Jesus. Remember, Jesus has told them he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. Now, we'll continue here on verse 35 where he says, For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever wish loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Now, let's consider these famous words, right? I'm sure most people, even non-Christians, would have heard these words before that were spoken by Jesus. They may not know who spoke them, but they probably heard these words. They sound familiar. But what does it mean, right? This brings us to the first question that I asked you to consider today, and that was, what does Jesus mean when he says, you must lose your life in order to save it? Well. Jesus is telling them that the problem is not out there. Freedom is not fighting off the Roman oppressors or setting up yet another earthly kingdom. Jesus is telling them again that true freedom is freedom from sin. And dying to self, 
Remember, Jesus has already been teaching them that he's already been teaching them that sin comes from within, from inside their own hearts. Now he again tells them that following him means that you're going to need to die to those old sinful ways and desires. And yes, this will mean bearing a cross in this life. It won't be easy. But in doing this, Jesus says that you're going to find true life. You'll find true freedom and eternal life. And Jesus points out that, hey, this is totally worth it. He says that, he says, what price can you possibly put on your own soul? I mean, your being, your whole being is at stake here. You don't want to gain the world at the cost of your own soul. That's insanity. <laughs> well, let's continue at verse 38, where Jesus says, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Now, Jesus very plainly says here that if you reject his way and you're ashamed of him, then he will be ashamed of you when he returns in glory. And remember, Jesus is coming back, and when he does, it'll be in glory with his angel army to destroy the lawless one, the Antichrist. You definitely don't want to be on the wrong side of that battle, right? Now let's read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. It says, Then that lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth, and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. Right? Jesus wins that battle, and it's just with a breath of his mouth. I mean, really, there's no contest. There really isn't a battle, much of a battle at all. But that kind of leaves us with that last question I asked you to consider. And that was, and it's one that I hope that you'll pray about this week and keep at the forefront of your mind and pray on it every morning. And that is, what areas of your life are you trying to save? Is there any areas of sin that you need to deal with? If so, remember, You've been given the power to defeat this through the Holy Spirit, the very Spirit of God within you. If you have believed in Jesus Christ, the one true God who takes away all your sin, if you aren't sure, you should pray to Jesus and ask him to reveal this to you. Remember, Jesus gives this gift through a forgiveness and eternal life freely to everyone who believes, everyone, through faith. If you believe that Jesus is who he said he was and you put your trust and faith in him and turn away from your sin, and you believe he's the son of God, he's the way of truth life, you too will have this power and victory over sin and you'll have eternal life. And then you will be on the right side and your soul will be saved because it'll be kept safe in Jesus. Anyways, guys, I pray that you're gonna cling to the cross of Jesus until the next life is revealed by his coming in power and glory. Amen. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and God willing, I will see you next week. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video this week. And remember, true knowledge is meant to be shared. So get out there, tell a friend or two or three or five or maybe ten. Tell ten friends what you've heard this week. And God willing, I will see you.